Near Automata is a beautiful game. A complete masterpiece and one of my personal favorite games of all time, Near Automata is known for its great combat and its interesting moral dilemmas, among other things. But to be honest, that's enough with the chit chat man, let's just skip all the pleasantries. Today I want to talk about the aforementioned moral dilemmas of Near Automata and more specifically how they affect the character arcs of the three playable characters. Those characters being 2B, 9S, and A2. Quick disclaimer, this video is going to be going over a lot of spoilers, so if you plan on playing the game or you just want to play it, you probably shouldn't watch this video. Also, this video is entirely subjective. If you disagree with me or just have a different opinion, don't be scared to leave a comment down below. Well, without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, so I'm just going to give you guys some information that you probably need to know if you haven't played the game yet, but you still want to watch the vid. 2B, A2, and 9S are androids. Androids are weapons created by humans, and they've been patrolling the earth and working for the humans on their own. This is because humans almost went extinct and the survivors fled to the moon. Machines, or the robots, were made by the aliens who came to earth to take over but got clapped by the androids, ultimately leaving the machines as their last remnant. I figure we should start with 2B since she's technically the main character of the game and I'm going to be kind of comparing her to 9S throughout this segment. We see them together for the majority of the game and a lot of the moments that I'm going to be using to judge her character are shared between them. So uh, I guess I'll just be doing both of them at the same time. In the beginning of the game, 2B sort of has this pessimistic nonchalant view of the world. Like, she has a noticeable lack of empathy for the robots they encounter. She doesn't even consider the possibility of them understanding human concepts. She just sees all of them as copying human behaviors. This is made all the more clear when you look at 9S who acts very differently to 2B. From the first moment you see him, he sacrifices himself for 2B and even prioritizes uploading a backup of her data over his. I mean, to be fair, you can make a case that 2B would have done the same thing and she is shown risking her life for him later on in the game. But his views on the robots are a lot more compassionate and he seems willing to accept them as living things. Or at the very least that they're able to think and feel emotions like hatred and love. In the conversations they have for the first 1 or 2 hours of the game, 2B just comes off as very dismissive of the robots which is the complete opposite of 9S. Something I thought about is the fact that in the story, 2B is a combat android and 9S is a scanner android. It would make sense that 2B is more focused on the mission and doesn't really care about the ethicality of what he's doing. Whereas 9S, the scanner android, takes in and considers the possibilities and ideas that are being shown based off the machine's behaviors. The amusement park area is a perfect example of this. The robots throughout this area are preaching, or I guess just chanting, that they should be happy together. Throughout this whole area, the robots within it are pushing this message of happiness, implying that they feel emotion, but they don't really seem like they do. The boss of this area is a really good showcase of this concept. This machine, Simone, once adored another machine called Jean Paul. She tried to make herself more beautiful to get his attention and to make him notice her. But like, she still didn't really understand emotions. This machine, Simone, didn't understand the concept of beauty or love. But regardless, she learned how to sing and started eating androids and taking their parts to try to make herself look more beautiful. But despite all of this, Jean Paul didn't love her. Simone's story is interesting because it kind of backs 9S's belief, or sorry, 2B's belief that she's, they're just like copying humans. But it also does show that they feel the emotions, they just don't understand them. After they learned about her backstory and defeated her, 9S tries bringing up to 2B saying it's almost like it had actual emotions, but 2B just sticks to her whole machines don't have emotions shit. Nonetheless, it's clear to see that 9S is starting to have doubts about that. 2B just flat out doesn't believe it, but 9S is different. He is obviously leaning more towards not believing machines have emotions like when they go to the village. The machines here have a society of peaceful robots that show a lot of human traits. I mean, there's literally a machine philosopher, the aforementioned Jean Paul that Simone was in love with. You can see 9S struggling with his beliefs, but 2B still just doesn't care. She still hasn't even considered it, it seems like. The forest area is the next kind of morally questioning place for these two. So in the forest a couple hundred years ago, there was this machine called the Forest King. The Forest King was this big ass robot that declared independence and made the forest a kingdom for machines. And I mean, like the ones in the village, these machines also lived in a well-working society. I mean, a bit more primitive because I mean, they were in a fucking jungle, but it worked nonetheless. They worked and functioned like a society would for 128 years until the Forest King died. They put the memory and data of the king into this small ass baby robot and thought it would grow up and be their new king. And I mean, obviously it didn't because robots don't grow like how humans grow, so it just stayed tiny because they didn't know how to make him bigger. But the machines protected it regardless. I mean, throughout this area, it's more of the same that you saw last section. 9S questioning how machines can have a king and how they functioned as a society, and 2B just kind of brushing it off. Once they actually get to the baby king, an android that looks just like 2B comes out of nowhere and kills it. Spoiler alert, this is A2, the other android I mentioned in the beginning, but like, it's not really time to talk about her views and shit yet, so just keep it pushing. A2 is an android that deserted and killed other androids and is seen as a traitor so they gotta annihilate her. Before and during the fight, 9S is questioning why she betrayed them whereas 2B just follows orders and tries to kill her. Again, my theory about 2B being a combat android and that affecting how she thinks rings true in this moment. I mean, she's faced with an android that looks just like her and doesn't even question it, just mindlessly follows her orders to kill her. 
Anyway, A2 escapes, but before she leaves, she says that she didn't betray the androids, she betrayed command. Ninus wants to know what she means by that and even asks their commander, but Tsubi as always just doesn't give a fuck. I know it might seem like she's just this nonchalant stone cold ass nigga, but this is technically still like the opening part of the game. Uh, I mean not necessarily like opening part, but more like the first part, and this is a long ass game. And since this game is so long, I feel like we should just fast forward to when Tubi actually starts changing her views. Okay, so a bunch of shit happens, robots explode like very badly, and Ninus and Tubi are split up. Turns out this advanced machine Adam that looks like an android but isn't one, just a very advanced machine, kidnapped him. This isn't the first time you run into him. You fought him and his brother Eve earlier in the game, but it wasn't really worth mentioning. Anyway, this nigga Adam and his brother have been researching the fuck out of humans since the last time we saw them. They've been picking up human characteristics, acting like them, and participating in human activities. Overall, just trying to replicate them and better understand them. During this human dick sucking period, he came to the realization that the core of humanity is conflict. He states that fighting, stealing, and killing is humanity in its purest form, that is the basis of life. But since machines exist in a connected network and are essentially immortal, they can't fully understand humans and the concept of life and being. So he disconnects himself from the network during his fight with 2B, fully embracing death. And uh, yeah, 2B kills him and frees 9S. And uh, let's just add another like, like time skip in between this. Later on, 2B, on her own, comes into contact with this religion slash cult of robots. These god robots start killing themselves and each other, believing that they'll be sent to the afterlife. Some of these robots just want peace. Some of them don't want this killing, and some are killing the ones that aren't backing the religion. Machines sacrificing themselves, killing each other, losing their faith, or dying over their faith. Anyway, time for one more fast forward. Eve, if you remember him, he is back and fucked up over the death of his brother. 2B and 9S kill Eve, but 9S is corrupted by Eve and asks 2B to kill him. And yeah, you know, 2B does it. And she is really fucking sad, you know, she's crying and shit. I can't remember, I think she was gonna go on this long ass monologue, but... 9S isn't actually dead. His memory was uploaded to the machine database and he wakes up in the body of this machine. Okay, so this sequence of events back to back to back is what really changed 2B's views on machines. Listening to Adam's ravings about the human psyche and then seeing how angry and sorrowful Eve got at the death of his brother even though he's just a machine, watching the religious machines kill each other and destroy their small society over their differing faiths all the while mimicking human society, and finally losing 9S only for him to come back in the form of a machine, I feel like these events make up the bulk of a character. Arc. Now of course this change of opinion didn't happen as fast as I'm making it seem. I mean, even during her fight with Eve, she was still in disbelief in how distraught Eve was about the death of his brother, ultimately not wanting to live without him. Keep in mind, Adam and Eve are machines. Robots made by the aliens just like the rest Tubi has been killing up to this point. After 9S takes over that robot, Tubi thinks about what actually separates androids from machines. And I mean, excuse me interjecting, not much actually separates them. One is made by the aliens and one is made by the humans, but like, they're the same thing overall. The only real difference I can notice is that like androids are made to look like humans, but I mean even if you look at the advanced machines that are Adam and Eve, some of them do look like humans. She thinks about everything she's seen thus far and concludes that machines have gained emotions and consciousness. Tubi's character arc has gone full circle and for the most part her character arc is over. It ends with her realizing that machines are no different than androids and also with her realizing her love for 9S. And also, just to clarify, this is not the, the I really wanna fuck you like right now type of love, this is more of a of an any other type of love. You don't don't get it fucked up. I've seen the shit that you niggas be drawing. But uh, anyway, I've kind of stopped talking about 9S. What's been going on with him? When 9S and 2B were split up, 9S wasn't in control of his actual body and was instead hooked up to the machine network. He basically has access to all the information that the machines have gathered, and there's a fuck ton of it. One thing he finds out is that the shipments that the androids have been sending to the moon, cause you know, remember, the remaining humans are still on the moon. Anyway, he discovers that these shipments are almost completely empty. He finds Council of Humanity records and sees that they were formed by the androids even though it should be the other way around. He eventually gets his body back and the commander meets with him, revealing that he knows 9S or she knows 9S has been snooping around the servers and looking at the sus files. Okay, so there's no way I actually just typed out sus files and just left it in the script. I am such a loser. She tells him that the androids created a fake council of humanity and installs a server on the moon to send out fake messages to the unknowing androids. Mankind no longer exists and it's been that way for centuries. The higher ups have just been lying to the androids so that they have a reason to keep fighting, and in turn a reason to keep living. As androids were originally created to protect and serve humans. The commander gives 9S a report with more info about the situation and challenges him to decide where his own path will lead him from here on. After Eve is destroyed and 9S gets his real body back, he decides not to tell 2B about what he learned. 9S ended up 
taking a completely different path to what I thought he would by the end of the story. I mean, Linus was already showing his belief in Machine's consciousness, so him coming to the same conclusion 2B came to wouldn't have hit the same as it did with 2B. Cause it's like, think about it. This whole time it's been showing that Ninus is like s slowly struggling with his beliefs about machines not having consciousness. So for his character arc to be, okay, I think machines might be like real things, to, oh okay, machines are real things. It just, it just doesn't hit. So instead for 2B to come to that realization and for 9S to just have to deal with this, it, it, it's very smart. Like, like whoever made this script, like, what was his name? Yokotaro? Is that his name? He, he's a fucking genius. For him to find out that everything he's been fighting for is fake and deciding to keep that secret to himself and keep living regardless is a great character arc. Like, again, it's almost as if 2B and 9S switch perspectives in a way. 2B seeing machines as human beings like how 9S did in the beginning and 9S kind of keeps following his higher ups regardless of knowing the fact that it's all meaningless. And he also keeps it from 2B because he knows a combat model like 2B might take it a lot worse than he did. Okay okay so this is all really fucking cool you know 2B had did that thing and, and, and 9S came to that thing but what the fuck is going on with A2? Yeah I'll talk about it next time. Like I said before, 2B's story and character arc is essentially done. There is more story after this, you know, with all the, the like 27 different endings and shit, but not much more happens with 2B and like her character changing in any way. 9S however still has a bunch of shit to go through and I haven't even talked about A2. But you know, aren't you guys interested? You know, A2 deserted and killed other androids? You know, I didn't betray the androids, I betrayed command. Aren't you guys, aren't you guys interested in that shit bro? So anyway, if this video does well, in part 2 I'll fully wrap up 2B and 9S's character arcs and I'll go over A2. So uh, you know, you guys better start running up the views, you know, this, this better get 1k views, you know, cause if it doesn't like the fucking Fancy Star Online video I made, there will be no part 2. I have dropped a lot of part 1s, videos didn't do well, there, there have been no part 2s on this channel, so you know, let's do better. But all in all, you know, I ain't got much to, I don't got shit to say, I wrote the script in like, fucking five hours bro i was just dead on my laptop i was just reading i just i just had the game in front of me i was going to places i had a video just like reminding me of everything that happened in the game uh pff, i was just on my phone type 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 scroll back what, what, what was this 2b did this a2 i don't have to write anything about her because part two 9s came to this realization i fucking uh, a 52 minute video i went through a two hour video i went through uh, fucking so many walkthroughs I went to had the game open on my Xbox going to specific places. It was a fucking trek, man But uh, you know, it was worth it I think this video is definitely up there with some of the best videos I've ever made You know like again the script is a lot better than what I like said because my voice is a bit fucked and It's also dark outside. I'm in a dark room with the window open very scary, but yeah, my fingers hurt after writing it, and you guys don't really give a shit, so let's just get to the outro. <coughs> As always, this was your boy Jugo Young, and I may or may not see you guys next time. Peace!